Welcome to the Global Discussion, discussions with creatives, leaders and thinkers. My name is Simon Hodgkins and it's a real pleasure to be joined on today's show by Nadia, aka the Mompreneur. Nadia, you're very welcome to the podcast. Let's begin by asking you to introduce yourself and what you do to our worldwide audience. So over to you, Nadia. Sure. Hi, Simon. Hello, everyone who's listening. Um, thank you for having me. So my name is Nadia. I go with the Mompreneur, as most of Web3 people who use a nickname. And my origin, so I am originally from Tunisia in North Africa. I moved to US in 2014 to get my MBA in hospitality management. I worked for about a decade in hospitality as a general manager uh, in hotels in Santa Monica, in LA. And it was an amazing time, you know, where hospitality is my passion and I was like in my field. Um, in 2020, when the corona hit and most of people's lives has changed, um, so I did switch to working from home. I did retire from hospitality. I uh, got married, had a baby, and um, finding a remote job in hospitality was challenging. I did try, um, but most of the executive and the management positions are on site. Since uh, my focus was to take care of my daughter and work first it was to take care of my home but that was not very fulfilling to me I was like okay I can do this but I also can do something else as I was very active in my professional life before and thanks to the internet like there are so many options now um, it took me a while to browse see what's in there um, I found honestly quite a lot of options but nothing before finding Web3, nothing was like exciting to me. There's nothing that I was like, okay, I'm going to wake up excited to work on this the next day. Until I found Web3, it was uh, like the rise of it in 2020. Um, so that's when I started. I found that interesting. So I also studied computer science before getting into hospitality. So that's how I had a little bit of, I would say, um, a base to start with. And then in the beginning, I was just, okay, let me just understand what is this about? I'm hearing NFTs, metaverse, these like fancy words since I love tech. <laughs> so um, I started just like studying, joining communities and everything was making sense and everything is relatable to, you know, like, something else that's also another word and that's when um, I established MetaHers uh, which is an empowering community for women in the modern digital era and that was because of the challenges I encountered when I wanted to get into Web3 and learn so I saw that it is not easy for women from home to literally um, feel like she belongs to this so um, probably I had the privilege of extra time that I literally um, just made for this. Where I'm like, okay, I told my family, you guys have to act like I'm working. And even though I was not making money, but I did dedicate a lot of time to be in the office. To They say the best way to learn is to teach. So I was, as I'm learning, just teaching other women, um, you know, the basics, fundamentals, or how to literally use one of the things in this big world that they can leverage in either their business or lifestyle. And I found a lot of excitement and fulfilling, fulfilling, um, fulfillment, sorry, about, about that. Like, it's really, you can see that it resolves an issue that is happening and being dragged now, especially when we hear, okay, it's a male dominated and all those things. Like it's not fun to hear as a woman before you get into 
any industry, like including hospitality, it's also a male dominated industry, but I never looked at it as, okay, I cannot do this. It's just that more men decided to go that way. So if I do, I don't think there will be anything that can stop me. And that was my mindset when I got into this. And then I wanted to be the face for women that look, this is approachable. This is possible. You don't have to take you don't have to have a tech background or finance background um, to build things or to learn on, or to leverage it. And yeah, it's been an amazing mission uh, since then. Well, thank you for giving us that background and that context, Nadia, because you're right. And I think anybody coming new to that, I suppose the web 3.0 space, if I can use that term, there was a big disconnect, I think, initially between, and maybe there still is in certain areas, between people that understood it and really got it and people that wanted to understand more but didn't know where to start. And I know your community in terms of Meta Hers, it's sort of uh, women helping women. It's kind of got this VIP sort of feel to it. Uh, and it's a real community that you're building. But you, you're doing more than, you know, it's not just Web3 NFTs. you I mean, you're talking about metaverse, of course, but you also artificial intelligence has come along, hasn't it, in a big way. And of course, you've got elements of, you know, whether it's social media or personal growth or, uh, you know, community tokenization. There's lots of different areas that you sort of touch on. So could you just maybe tell us a little bit about the kind of areas that this this group, this community are involved in? Absolutely. I think I followed the timeline of the things that are coming out and people were interested about. And as a founder of a community that's trying to empower women in these things, I thought that, okay, I should not limit myself to NFTs only. I am not an artist to just put myself in that bubble. Or um, when, when, when Metaverse started the discussions about it, same thing as like Nadia, just go see what is this so I can answer other women. Maybe other women can leverage it even more than me. So my intention was always to discover these territories and then explain what, how was the trip. And the Metaverse is, I would say, one of my favorite parts of the Web3. Um, because it's just, I think it's a, the new social media. You see how people are crazy about Facebook and Instagram. It's more for the interactions and the, like the human connections. The metaverse is the same, just another level where um, you and whoever is with you are in one area. And um, it's, it's just, I think felt like okay when we hear about it took me a while to be able to explain what is the metaverse because just because people have higher expectations and it's nothing it's just a digital place that you would go to and meet other people virtually either on a either on your computer your smartphone or with the with the vr headset so first I started um, using some apps before in before getting the vr headset and I found some free resources, free apps where you can just build an office, you can build um, a um, gallery, you can build the place just for events. And when I found myself drawn to that, I was like, okay, I can go to the next level. And I bought the Oculus and that was like a new world opening for me um, to a point that when I was using it, I was not, I didn't know what's real and what's not. So I went first to like Horizon Worlds, which is like the main place where people go to either like play or go to a concert or which is found by Meta, um, uh, previously Facebook. So I found real people, they're real women, women entrepreneurs. They have crazy offices, crazy stores, like they're just sitting like me now in the office. They're sitting there and they're like, hello, welcome. How can I help you? And I'm like, okay, are you a robot? Are you a real person? They're like, no, I am a real person. So, and that's like one fascinating thing. It's just like you're meeting other people just in a whole another environment and like things that are even now in my memory, when I think them, it's not like something in real life because it was with a person I had it 
I was communicating, but it was just like in this dreamy, you know, like place that cannot be realistic. And that's when I decided first I took some courses to learn how to build um, because building on the metaverse, especially meta is free. So anyone can build a metaverse space and you can leverage in any way. It can be a place where you meet with your friends. It can be an office, can be um, a meditation place, can be a gallery, can be events place, a shop. So, so um, after learning the basics, I was like, okay, I know there are some women who are passionate about this. So they probably, if I had the intention to build metaverse world, I should hire one of these women at least I know what I'm asking for and I know what it takes um, to be able to uh, to do this and they exceeded my expectations in building something really really like nice meta herbs words is like all feminine all pink and it has um games it has offices it has a podcast uh, studio it has a place uh, for like the classes and I started doing events there. I had an event of, uh, what the fuck is, NFT. Uh, there were people from, women from the metaverse who don't know what NFT is. And they were very interested. And I, there were more than 20 women there. And me with the board and explaining to them. And we were talking, interacting. And it is very similar to real life. So when you talk, they will hear you, um, but if they talk, you don't, you don't hear them. It's only the person next to them that can hear them. So that was it's not like um, like Zoom now. If we talk, it's going to be one layer in, in the metaverse. It's literally like in real life. So um, that went very well. And then I did a partnership with my BFF where uh, we had their community come and do a tour to see what it is especially so my when you go to the metaverse now you will notice that there's so many kids and to me that is scary because it's a very difficult developed technology it shouldn't be dominated by kids so and the thing is i was inviting some women to meet there and go and before metaverse space they would come sometimes play with us or like bother or you know you cannot have like a good conversation in like a safe closed place so that's when I'm like if this is how I'm feeling being comfortable with the metaverse so imagine another woman so let me do this gated um word where only if you're a member or only if I'm doing an event or I give you access that you can go so they can feel feel safe in exploring and um that's how things um you know like turn to be very interesting in just the fact of okay seeing something ready made by a woman built by women managed by women so um I remember the woman whoever comes to visit they'll be like always oh Nadia you do this so well in showing us and I'm like in hospitality I was doing this with heels so now that I'm stand sitting and it's with my VR I can do it all day and even I'm even prouder because it's my word. It's not somebody's hotel. So that's how I link my skills from hospitality to the metaverse because metaverse is not about building. It's about nurturing that place and making it, um, you know, like a lively place that people can go to. After that, um, it, so I discovered AI before the hype of it. Um, I was asked many times to write uh, articles about the metaverse and my English is my third language so I wouldn't write very well at least a copy that I would be proud of um, and I did not want to write something that you know like I'm not really good at writer and I wouldn't expect sometimes like a copywriter level for some articles that will be spread with the world like because it's not about what language I speak or it's about my experience and the experience is very rich so I wanted to meet the same level of writing and that's when I started finding before OpenAI uh, starts um, there was another app another website that helps you fixes mistakes makes the structure and everything and that solved a big issue for me because before that when I needed to do an article I would have to pay for 
a copywriter and it's harder because you have to explain the topic you have to say what you want to get into what you want to explain then they will write it for you versus a tool that has the skill of writing and me just like keep talking to it and with the rise of AI and in November uh, when open AI started and people started talking about it, I'm like, okay, I've, I've been leveraging, leveraging this. This is how you can do it. It's not, people had a lot of assumptions, a lot of critics about it. And I'm like, for for somebody like me, it only helped me. Um, I can now write more articles. I can make it sound more than me because it's me and the writer, not the person who has feelings and has their own perception of things. Now it's just me and this smart tool that can write for me. And that's how I started a magazine, MetaHers magazine. Um, so it will be launched soon. And I did some amazing interviews with women leaders in Web3. <clears throat> and even though I am not a journalist, but I was able to leverage AI to help me in that. I have the passion to, <clears throat> to sorry, um, extract information, to translate the experience from a complicated thing to an easy thing that any woman can understand. And I did mention in like the first page of the magazine that this is an example to see how anyone or woman can use AI in things that will only help you. Um, so it has, so think of it as <laughs> Vogue magazine, but for women in business, because we have this tendency, women, magazines are more for clothes and jewelry and hair and makeup so it's like it's we're 20 2023 almost 2024 women got further than that so uh once it's launched it will be like something uh, every trimester that will be released and it just highlights women's experiences, roles, um, some articles to explain what is chat GPT, what is mid journey in like a fun, easy way, like just a magazine. Because I did encounter this issue of content creation in social media. So I am someone who does not have the skill, I would say, to just take my phone and record myself talking and stuff. Um, I love doing podcasts. I love doing train, like train people on Zoom and everything, but publicly and like just take my phone and record and put it. That's not something I master. So that's why I'm like, okay, how can I still share all what I know and all the things that I have access to, but not on Instagram or Facebook, but I still want to be the face of it because if you just put content on social media, you can hire someone. At some point I hired a girl who just posts things that she doesn't even understand. And then I was like, what is the point? They look really good. It has engagement and everything. But I'm like, it's disconnecting me because I feel like the, the, the goal of that is just engagement. And for me, it's not the engagement, it, it, not the goal. Uh, it, for me, it's more the interaction the experience the explaining uh, how i did this why am i enjoying it if i'm not enjoying it fine i can find something else so i did not want to stay in that stigma which is honestly like it's a hard thing nowadays if you want to do anything online you have to be a content creator so i thought okay i did not want to push and force myself too much um to then use ai um, to do this magazine where then every three months everything can be put in there and then you have it in hand so you can read it can stop can come back to it can have interactive stuff can have like some gifts digital products um things like that and that's how the journey has been you know taking me from the nfts to the metaverse to the ai and until now like my day can be literally a mix of all these things in like few hours Wow, Nadia, uh, that's an incredible um, journey, I, th I suppose, through the technology. Um, but I suppose the common thread coming through it all is that it is very much about women supporting women. Uh, I loved what you said about the new magazine, the MetaHers digital magazine, I suppose, because it's more than just 
not that there's anything wrong with clothes and makeup and all that stuff, but it's more than that, right? It's, it, it moves you on in this sort of modern, more technologically advanced business environment. And I think metaverse and NFTs, they kind of become very popular very quickly and maybe a little bit of crypto on the side here and a little bit of that sort of thing. And it sort of rise and fell. And then we saw a lot of big international brands stop using the term NFTs as much and started talking about collectibles. And we've seen collect- some big brands moving into that sort of NFT blockchain space, uh, which is the same stuff. They just kind of repositioned it slightly. Um, but I suppose ultimately what you're doing is you're helping people to catch up on those latest trends. You're, you're enabling people that want to find out more. And you're also building this community, whether it's coaching or catch-ups or Zoom or whatever. And I loved your your explanation about, you know, when the sort of writing tool came along and it maybe has some of that machine learning or artificial intelligence as we know it today built in. And the power that that suddenly gives people to be able to, well, hang on, there's no reason why I can't create my own magazine here. Uh, There's no reason why I can't have a... a a virtual recording studio i can have my own offices in the metaverse and you know for people i often talk about gamers you know they're used to buying things in a digital environment and maybe the rest of the world is still playing catch up and there's a bit of an education gap isn't there there um where do you think we're going to end up i mean what's your view on on where this landscape goes what are you trying to achieve with metaverse over maybe the longer term Good question. Um, So like you mentioned, we know them and their real terms are like NFTs and this and blockchain, crypto, but then the big brands, they labeled as digital collectible, just probably they know what their, (laughs) what their um, like customers or like users, what they will be comfortable with. And they have the capability to rename this and just ride with it. However, I feel like that's also a way that's trying to tell people, oh, it's just a digital digital collectible. I don't think it changes uh, the core of it. It's still an NFT. Like I would, I prefer, that's the thing. I prefer to explain, even though I know it took me time to be able to explain what is NFT, even though after buying so many NFTs and getting involved and making my own NFTs, But just because the technology is so vague that it takes a lot of practice to be able to explain it to anybody. So I'm leaning with MetaHerse community more into um, giving you resources, examples, real life examples to understand what is NFT. And then you can call it whatever you want. Because if you buy digital collectible and then you meet somebody in Web3 and they're telling you NFTs, you probably don't think that that's the same thing or they would think that they're smarter, they know better, why it's just people playing with these names. So to me, like the name, oh, like the names don't matter uh, as long as you make an effort to explain um, and even I think it is true, like nobody will get NFTs from one sentence of definition. To lower the fear of these terms and more offer education that will make you comfortable um, dealing with these things or explaining them, because um, at the end of the day, the definition will be the same. Digital collectible doesn't make it easier or more accessible than NFT. However, it's the effort of explaining and you know the experience with it and everything that will build the real like relationship with that term or that word. And um, I know also it's not easy for women. Maybe what helped me the most, it's not the definitions. Like before getting into NFTs, I read so many articles. I'm made so many research so many videos on youtube but still nft what is it it was still like blurry until i bought myself nfts until i created nfts until i joined this community okay so this is just a token that gives you access to whatever can be a service can be a product it's just on the blockchain instead of 
um, something, you know, just in the web tool. And that is the goal. Um, same thing for the same thing for the metaverse. Instead of making it something really um okay like people are making fun of the metaverse or no just just understand and see if it serves you if it doesn't just go um find something else and at some point if it's not now at some point everyone is going to be using it just uh the same as the rise of social media like some people were making fun of it some people like our parents were laughing and like what is this who are you talking to or like websites or credit cards or any of these like um you know like technologies that uh, we we were not familiar with but then they're just in our lives in our <laughs> everyday life without even us noticing and especially for this web3 and these modern tools we find kids adapting more to it natively more than us so that is alarming um and we don't want them to grow up them like handling, dealing, managing, educating these things without like relating it to other things they have done because they don't know they don't know another thing. Like my brother in Tunisia, he's 13 years old and most of the day he's in the metaverse. M my dad doesn't know, nobody knows these things. And I'm like, okay, like it's good. I'm so happy and proud that, you know, at his young age, he's accessing these things, but he might have questions. I don't want him to go Google it. Like I want my mom or my dad or anybody to be able, or my older sister to be able to explain it to him rather than them finding themselves in the, this corner all alone. And they will think, you know, like, okay, they're beyond us and they cannot even ask because we're not doing anything there like Roblox has millions of users. There are some parents who would remove the phone from their kids, but their kids have the VR and Oculus and they think that it's just a gaming thing while no, it it's goes beyond the internet. Those are real people. Those are like um, some environments are like so realistic. So it is equipping, I would say like women, in US or in Tunisia, in North Africa, where resources are less to be comfortable dealing with these things. NFT, and then they know also it's called digital collectible or metaverse or AI or crypto or Web3 in general. Like just the Web3 term, it's still something heavy for people. What are we gonna call it? If it's not decentralized internet, it's still complicated. So that's why I think, and it's not something you can learn in a day, but when you have a community, when you start exploring, if you have a question, you don't have to stay stuck. If you have one idea that you want to experiment, you don't have to be lost and try things. You can just go to somebody who knows, like can go to a community and say, this is what I just want to do a shop. I just want to do a gallery. Okay, these are the steps. This is how you create your art as an NFT, and then this is how you take your NFT to the metaverse. They learned nothing from the fundamentals, but by building that, they will have more experience than somebody who maybe is knows the definitions, but is not using it. And I think for Web3, that's when it's gonna be um, more broad and more accessible, is when people, they wouldn't need to, to have, I don't know, a course, or something to be able to adapt because they're busy with other things. They are in other industries. Like we are fully in Web3, so we have the time to keep up with these things. But if a woman or a man is an entrepreneur in commerce or anything, they don't have the time to go and learn and join communities of Web3 or unless literally you have a team dedicated for that, or as a person, you are passionate about that, but you should be also busy with your own industry that you need to catch up with and work on. So, but it would be more realistic um, and like more efficient to just go and do start something with this Web3, either NFT or Metaverse or leveraging AI or buying crypto, investing in crypto or anything without wondering or taking months of like education. Yeah. And I, I think you're, you're obviously passionate about the space. You're living in this space. You've used the word realistic quite a lot. And 
there's that blurring almost over time between virtual and real. And it's just an, an, an area. It's just a world that you end up operating in. I, I kind of understand that. And I suppose when we see big, you know, big companies, some of the biggest company in the world, Apple, um, you know, rolling out very high end uh, glasses, you know, very high end uh, VR type, uh, AR type um, tools. Uh, next year at the time of recording, I think they'll be available. We've already seen the announcement. But, it, you know, you mentioned Oculus and other brands. There are lots of VR alternatives out there. And the 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 real world applications can't be ignored, whether it's, you know, top flight surgeons using them remotely, uh, whether people are being training. I was talking only recently to somebody running a health company and the 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 benefit of sharing information via a VR environment for healthcare and patient care, they're seeing some phenomenal results from that, much mm -hmm. better than in real life, if I can use that term. So I think it's a very exciting space. And of course, it's it's layered now, isn't it? Web3, blockchain, crypto, um, artificial intelligence, social media, it's kind of all coming together. And the other thing, and I'd be interested in your view on this, the next sort of six 12 months on your own roadmap. I also feel that it's quite exciting because it feels like we're only just getting started. There's lots going on, but it seems like we're only just skimming the surface. Do you feel like that too, from your perspective? Absolutely. The fact that we assign the term virtual, virtual, virtual to most of the things that are related to Web3 probably makes this stigma of, oh, it's a virtual thing. It is, but at the end of the day, that's just um, a label to, to define the fact that it is not, you can do it from anywhere, from just using a, a device. You don't have to go to an office or you don't have to go like on site to do whatever, like anything from all these things, but it is not virtual. The experiences I've done, I've had in the metaverse are not, are real. Like I have memories of them. I remember them. I remember how I felt exactly like in real life, if it's not more exciting because it's very unique. I've had in real life events and with like same amount of women, like 20 women in the space, and when I compare that to the metaverse experience, I'm like, the metaverse is more special because of our time now. Like the fact that I was able to do the same thing, do a workshop, have everyone attend from everywhere in the world without going to a place, you know, without having to pay for a space. And it is an amazing space that I built, I conceived and made exactly for that. Um, gives you authority in what you do where you're not limited. Um, it's just, I think these tools give um, the possibility, same as a company who has access to a budget of millions and millions, so they can do anything. If they wanna do a seminar with 500 people, they can easily do it versus a normal person, that's very hard. So with these tools, it is a step to the possibility of democratizing these those things where it's all about your passion, your love, your goal, and then it is now, it can be done online. You don't have to, you know, like go through the process of uh, promoting it in real life and people have to be there. They have to come commute and all those things. And plus you, when you do a real life event, you know, have to make it nice. You have to do a decor. You want to add some like snacks, things like that. I didn't have to do that <laughs> in the metaverse. And people were even happier because there were some interactive things. And um, it, it, it is, it is very unique, especially at, this time where I'm like, okay, I was able to give value without doing a lot of efforts in terms of like a physical place. So we do attribute the word of virtual and stuff, but it's, it's not virtual, it is real. Like it is virtual, probably it's digital, it's in a computer or a phone or a VR headset, but it, uh, whatever experience you wanna build is a real experience. For example, artists, 
either as a traditional way you go and feature your art in a gallery you have to be approved you have to um they take commission from you um you have to have a, like a name to be able to join some galleries while in the virtual space or in the digital space you can go and create your own gallery or join other galleries um, and the process is even easier because there are less people and now they're encouraging anyone to do that. So you can also, like I said, do your own space, feature your art, invite people, and they can also buy it. So they can all come in at the same time. And this is can be this can be done for free with spatial app. You just do your gallery, download same way as you're downloading on Instagram or Facebook. You download your art there as an NFT or just a picture, release a date, you can say, okay, I'm in this date, I'm doing like an exhibition. People can come at the same time. You all see each other. You all can interact with each other. They can walk and see each piece and they can also buy it. So this is not a virtual experience. This is a real experience. These people, they enjoy the art. They can make transactions. They can be potential clients. For me, for example, I'm I'm not an artist and I had some type of art that I would like or like add to my house, that's it. But in the metaverse, it opened my mind so much because it's attractive to me to go see any type of art and I was drawn to it. Probably if it was a gallery next to my house, I wouldn't go, but because it was there, in the metaverse and I can go and give myself the time to look at it and say oh this is nice I don't probably not my style but this is really nice and that's that's already a good thing for you know like not putting people in people in bubbles that's what it does it mixes people with with the skills um to do these things to be open to each other like I I wouldn't see uh, there are some galleries spatial they do every once and then like update their big uh, big like uh, main gallery and I cannot avoid not looking at each one of them just you can think and oh these people what did they how did they get here it must be interesting so that that is like a, a fun part um, you know where you're like and. You're like okay, I'm seeing the results of what other people putting efforts and where where uh, they are they are getting literally, and it's inspiring as well. Yeah, yeah, and do you know you've said some really interesting things there that have made me stop and think. And you're right when you point out, of course, that the use of the word the use of the word virtual in front of everything is very commonplace. But the human experience, what you take away and the memory, it's real, isn't it? And, and I think, you know, when you were talking about that, it just made me stop and think and go, yeah, because it, it is real. To, it's a real experience. You're experiencing something. You're remembering something. It's going into your own memory bank. So whether you're sitting there with, you know, something on, you know, some kind of tech device to help you access that that experience, mm -hmm. you're still experiencing it. You're still reacting to it as a human uh, and you're still remembering it and you're still having that experience and you're still meeting people and being able to talk to people like you were referring to earlier. And I think it is fascinating, but thank you for sharing that because I think that's such an important point um, because we can just think, oh, that's virtual and not really get involved. But it it's human too, right? Even though we're wearing tech, right? Exactly, exactly. Another really good example about this virtual is just a ter term to explain that it's digital, I think, more than virtual is unreal, is working out in the metaverse. So I am somebody who does not really enjoy going to like work out in, in anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> beside like jogging on my own I don't like to go and just use those machines and when I gave birth I gained weight and still I was like I don't like to have to do that I'd like to go walking in nature and stuff but and at the same time I was aware that maybe I have to exercise 
um, to lose that weight. And I started working out in the metaverse. And that is a whole another like level where you don't even question it because you feel it right away. If you work out in the metaverse, you will end up more sore, more tired after just like the session than a real a real workout. And it's more exciting. So there's this app that I use. You just put your target. There's so many workouts. You have a trainer, personal trainer, and, and you pay. It was $20 yesterday. They just updated it to $9 a month. So you choose the class. You choose the trainer. You choose if you want boxing, if you want um, um, yoga, if you want just breathing, breathing, you want meditation, you want something like hardcore. And it has music and the coach while you are working out is talking to you based on your movement. So if you hit the target, let's say hard, it says, yes, good job. Or like if you do it um, not with so much power, it says, oh, you're not in a good shape today. Go harder. So it is synchronized with what I'm doing. <laughs> Literally, like it's not just virtual. Um, it does exceed that where it knows what I'm doing at the time in my house realistically. And I was like just enjoying it. And I come back every time excited because it's also like every two, three minutes, it changes the song and the, the environment. You're one time at the beach, one time on the volcano, one time uh, on the moon. And it's like real workout. Like I end up with like all they come see me they're like what were you doing <laughs> like to look like that I'm like yes I was working out in the metaverse they're like you have nothing you have no machine what did you do <laughs> like so that and there is I've seen the results and now whenever like I don't feel good or anything and I feel like I need to move I just wear that and I go do boxing go do any of the activities and it's so much fun to a point that I cannot go anymore, even if they had a 1% chance to go to a gym. <laughs> so that's how at some point these things will exceed our real experiences just because they're meeting our needs. Yeah, that, I mean, that's incredible. And thank you for sharing that because it it really does bring it to life. Uh, in you know, it's in your life and you're part mm -hmm. of that. And it has real world impact, right? It makes real world changes. I really love you sharing that. Look, Thank before you. we run out of time, Nadia, the last thing I want to ask you is, is there anything else that we haven't touched on? Or is there something else that you'd like to share with our worldwide audience today? And secondly, if people want to connect with your community, find out more about MetaHers, the new magazine that's coming, and all the things that you're involved in, where do you want to send people to? So anything else you want to mention and where should we point people to that want to find out more about this exciting conversation we've been having today? Yes. So one thing I wanted to mention before we finish, and again, really thank you so much for this opportunity, is for those who are listening to us and don't have much experience or practice in the Web3 world, the NFTs, Metaverse, and everything, I hope that this really touched down more the things that we are dealing with realistically than just the tech of it and to say that it is for everyone who needs it who wants it um there's so many components of it that all you need is just to remove that fear or shyness or anything that's holding us back because this these are at the end of the day just tools we build the experience either in real life or using uh, email or metaverse or anything that's just us leveraging these tools instead of making it a traditional way which could be um low like co cost more or takes more time or anything do not feel fearful and just reach out to whoever you feel comfortable with or is in the same industry as you previously because most of us have other backgrounds than uh, just web3 and just ask, ask questions. We all started like that by not um, not feeling, you know, exempt, being exempt from this. Um, 
I think that's the only thing that's holding people from exploring more. It's you have two types. You have either the people who think, okay, I'm smart, I can get anything, I need this, I'm hustling online, I have to get into this, or the other people who are already have careers, they're thriving and everything. They might hear of this, but they'll be like, why do I even want to get involved there? I don't know. I want to stay in my comfort zone, talking about things I understand. So it's just to say that. Uh, this is something that we are very early. We always say that, but it's already something that's being used by big, big um, brands. So why not? For me, each one can aim. And since this is something you can do from anywhere, you don't need a big team or anything. So why not try even small things? And those are the things that will drive more creativity on how to leverage it. It's not about listening to YouTube videos explaining what the blockchain is. It's more about, okay, as a professional, how can I literally leverage this? And that's that's when you don't have to be an expert in the tech. You will just be leveraging. And, and in your industry, you will be seen as someone innovative and someone... Like I love the fact that now when people use Web3 in other traditional businesses, they say, okay, first, first to use NFTs in this or first to use the metaverse. Like I worked with so many girls in Tunisia and when they do their gallery, they'll be like, this is the first gallery in Tunisia, like a web metaverse gallery. And it is true. I'm like, yes, girl, put that label because, because it is true. So it's to literally... Um, go explore uh let your creativity um drive you in this and always link it to what you're doing so it's not a separate thing so how you that's how also um you literally can benefit from this and i think people who have established businesses and careers can really take advantage of this um smoothly if they just start experimenting and then go explain to the people in their industry how they did it, who did they reach out to, what were the challenges, because they will encounter and have other experiences than us dwelling fully into this. And that's how I think it will go, you know, it will be more broad and it will go to like mainstream. Um, for any woman who wants to learn more about anything, even if it's the first time that they hear about this term, that like I love that. I'm like it's like when you go to uh, have um, like a driving course and you tell the person I never drove in my life. It's better than when you go when you're already you know how to drive. So it's just like that fresh mind. Um, it's exciting to deal with people, you know, and just after having those terms in their minds and they think it's hard and you tell her, hey, you know, if you want to do an NFT, this is how you do it step by step in like one hour call and and boom, like everything for them becomes accessible, becomes um, easy, becomes functional. So to reach out to MetaHers, I have the um, Instagram page. They can follow me there. And then I have a link tree. They can join uh, metahurst community it's on geneva and that's where i have um different uh, like discussions around web3 women in business moms nfts metaverse um, branding the content creation how to leverage these tools for content creation and all the, those um you know, all those areas that are now necessary for any online business, even if it's like a small e-commerce shop. Um, for, for the magazine, I will, uh, there is a link also to subscribe and get uh, the first uh, release, which will be very, very soon. And I'm so happy that I was able to interview some amazing like women and girls from different backgrounds, different like expertise. And myself, even though I know this woman, I discovered a lot in, in the process of interviewing them. And when they share their personal experience, that's when it resonates with us women more than anything, more than, I don't know, like telling me that you have three galleries and you have five NF, I don't know, whatever collection nfts and you were featured in nft nyc and those things they 
that people would think you are a super woman if you got those things. But then you talk to them and they tell you how they got there and how they start. And then, okay, it makes sense that you got there. Like these are the steps. So any artist woman can resonate with any, I don't know, like e-commerce can resonate. A girl who is 15, 16 years old can also resonate with um, this artist girl who's young and started doing these things from outside of US. So it's um, making things relative for like the broad uh, audience. Well, that brings us nicely uh, to the end of our time today, Nadia. You've covered a lot of ground. You've excited us in terms of everything that's going on in this uh, world. I'm not going to say virtual. I'm going to say in this world. It's so exciting. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Uh, I want to thank people who've been watching or listening to us today on this episode. Make sure that you like, follow, subscribe, do everything I need you to do to help support this show. And of course, go and check out everything that Nadia is doing, whether that's the new magazine or the MetaHers uh, community and everything else that she's involved in. You really do need to go and check that out. And I hope that you'll join me back here for some more discussions with creatives and leaders and thinkers just like Nadia. But thank you, Nadia, a.k.a. the mompreneur. It's been really good to catch up with you again today. My pleasure. Thank you so much. And thank you for everyone who's listening. I hope they learned something or they got excited to go and discover and join us. 